we see, which I didn't see here. It's usually a, a close wound and see around the wound. It's due to the burning and unburnt particles. Uh, now, with respect to the travel, like in a contact wound, will we then see the suit rather than the stippling itself? Uh, a suit, they're all the gunpowder uh, gun residue, the suit is just burnt out completely. That's all. Now, with respect to the clothing worn by the victim, how will they impact your forming an opinion as to the range? Will we see the barrel mark of the, the muzzle mark on the body itself uh, when the muzzle is pressed against the body if somebody is wearing a vest and a t-shirt as it's in this case y yes you could you could still see that eh uma ngoku ukuthi ke impahla ka wayigqokile ziyaphenywa ke noma nazo ziyavivinywa ke impela ke uma ukuthi sibhamba sasibekiwe kuyona ke khona ke i mark ozoyibona noma ungayibona ke leyo mark leyo Now, again, there's something that's called bullet wipe, which is the greasy part of the outside of the bullet, which will reveal itself on the entrance wound uh, normally. Uh, did you see that with respect to the T-shirt worn by the victim in this case? No, I did not. Uh, and then the, the, the contact wounds that you talked about, uh, there are various contact wounds that will be the loose contact, the angled one, the hard one, and the incomplete one. If I understood you correctly, you said this was an angled acute contact wound, correct? Yes, it was a hard contact, it was right against the skin, but the barrel moved slightly in the direction as I've described. And now, with respect to when you want to do examination, in this case it was not done, uh, for, for reasons that you said, you, the investigating team, ballistic and investigation, decided that uh, they shouldn't be tested. What was the reason, in fact, for that? I don't think we could see anything. I can't remember. First of all, I can't remember. That was not significant to them. Now, evidence led in this case is that there was a scaffold in the kitchen at uh, photo 15 that was shown just before the break, and there were about two suspects and six adults in that space. Uh, yeah, we're just moving to photo 15 now. In that space, there were photo 15 is on the screen. Now, evidence is that there were there was a scuffle in that space among two suspects and six adult persons that were in the house. Now, I want to touch on this with respect to the PR test or the GSR test. What is the radius for the uh, GSR to attach to people that are near when the firearm is uh, fired in that space? That, unfortunately, I won't be able to tell well, you. That's, that's for, for the ballistics. ballistics. Okay, all right. Thank Thank you. You. Thank you. you also spoke about uh, the 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 the
uh, when the fire <coughs> sorry when the firearm is, is fired and the uh, gunpowder is ignited there is a flame coming out so that burns the edges so you get the searing effect eh uma ukuthi ke isibhamu siyaqhumake ukhona ke lokho ngathi ke umlilo ke ophuma yoke manje lokho kuyashisa ke lana kulokho kubiza ukuthi ke ama edge and in general with contact wounds against the clothing what sort of a mark will a contact wound have on a t-shirt if the muzzle is pressed against the skin and the t-shirt? It, it could be anything, it could be nothing. It could just be a hole, or you could see, depending obviously the angle of the firearm and how it was held, that you could see some of the remains of the uh, gunpowder. t-shirt <laughs> there, now I'm not sure whether this is a ballistic question. If you if it's a ballistic, you let me know. Uh, a witness testified in this court that he observed a firearm that was used by one of the suspects that it had a will. In your experience, in your training as a pathologist, will you know the type of firearm that's got a will? No, I won't. Okay. And you've testified, and it's at page six of your report, uh, in the specimens retained. And then it says blood and swabs from the fingerprints uh, were taken for DA analysis and the serial bag number and the SQE person that you handed the specimen to. Was GSR uh, or PR test done on the hands of the victim himself? I don't know. Okay. Now, I'm touching on the other aspect that was raised by my learned colleague from the state, uh, which is the following. A witness has testified in this court that upon hearing that the victim was shot and they being informed, that is the person who testified plus community members, they went to a nearby park to look for the alleged perpetrators and they searched the park, and after plus minus 12 minutes, they went back to the scene. And when they entered through this door, just near the hallway here, they found the victim lying down unattended. Now, my question to you is this. Uh, after plus minus 12 minutes of no medical attendance at all on the victim, would he have survived that wound? He suffered. But the doctor has just testified that it's not possible that he would have been alive for hours. Okay, all right. He says it's seconds. Seconds or milliseconds. Yeah, okay. It's fine. It's fine, madam. If the court can bear with me, I'm going to figure out. Now, as well as uh, just for clarification purposes, that the same persons, when they returned from the park, they tried to sit the victim up, and then they saw blood on the back. Is it procedure, or how would that affect the injuries if somebody shot on the chest? Is it, uh, people try to sit him up or pick him up like that with respect to no. the internal injuries? In terms of worsening that injury, yes. are you saying that yes. it it won't do much? It won't do it much. Uguti ge ba sebe figa ge be paramisa ge numa be mshalisa ge uguti ngenza ge uguti ge ina ba lelo ge uguti ge li li be sumu kakulu ge numa li male kakulu ge a angeke kwenza agna managa lonje loko nga kwenza.
Okay. That's the court process, my lord. That is the questions that I have for the doctor. Mr. Mlefi. Good day, Doc. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Doc. Thank you, Doc. <clears throat> I'm going to try and paint a scenario that was given by the state witnesses who testified, eyewitnesses, who testified about how possibly the incident might have had might have had happened in the house. Um, I will do that with a view to try and give you just a bit of a background. Then we come and speak about your possible findings on the fact that the firearm was most probably fired from an angle of depression. Do you understand? Thank you. Now, <coughs> According to the eyewitnesses, well, there are two versions, but I'll explain them to you. Um, one side of the story is that um, just, a pick up for, uh, just a bit of a background. According to the state witnesses, there are two people who got into the house whilst they were seated in the sitting room, one of which had a firearm. The other one did not have a firearm in his possession. Now, <clears throat> the one who had a firearm gave some instruction that he wanted money and cell phones. One of the occupants of the house stood up and accosted the gentleman who had a firearm, pushed, them, pushed him aside, and then dashed out of the house. That's when then the rest of the occupants of the house also stood up and a commotion then happened. They accosted the two people, the intruders, we prefer to call them intruders here at court, up to the kitchen area. That is generally the bit of a background. Now, one version from the eyewitnesses who were in the house is that the deceased then was in a tussle or was fighting with the person who had a firearm. That's now one of the versions. And as they were fighting, the person who had a firearm has had his back on the kitchen door, as you're looking at photo number 15. In other words, the, the, the firearm person or the person who was in possession of the firearm was leaning on the, on, the, on the kitchen door as the disease was facing him. Do you follow? Now, there was a shot that went off and everybody started to run away um, there's basically no indication that somebody said, no, I saw how the shot was fired. It was just a shot that went off as the deceased and the person with the firearm were fighting for the firearm. Now, I know you might know we are, we are not a ballistic expert, but on the basis of that first scenario, when you look at photo number 15, those are the markings where the bullet struck the door as well. Would you say that accords with the explanation, taking into account that the deceased was on the other side of the door. He was not leaning on the door. 
it was actually the person who had a firearm who was on the door. Would you say that accords with the factual explanation as presented to this court? And also, the fact that according to your finding, the bullet was fired from an angle of depression. No, that would not make sense. Thank you. Now, that was just the first scenario that was given to this court by the state witnesses. Now, the second scenario is one of the witnesses also testified that as the skirmishness was happening in the kitchen, the deceased was in a tussle or was fighting with the person who did not have a firearm, and that fighting was taking place at that door area. Do you follow? As and when the person who did not have a firearm was fighting with the deceased at that door area, the person who had a firearm was behind the deceased. Do you also follow? Now again, in view of your explanation that the, the, that the shot, um, uh, I mean, in view of your analysis and your conclusion that a shot could have been fired from an angle of depression, does the second scenario also accord with your finding? Do I understand you correctly is that this scenario implies that the deceased was uh, shot from the back? Do I understand you correctly? I, I, I did not get that talk. You a bit low. Uh, uh, do I understand you correctly? Yes. If the, the, the scenario that you have described implies that the deceased was shot from the back, yes. so the entrance wound would have been at his back. Do I understand you correctly? I'm, I'm, I'm not implying anything. I'm only trying to give you the facts that are presented to this court in yes. terms of the second scenario. The person who had a firearm being at the back of the deceased. Now, in terms of your finding, is that the entry wound is on the sternum, is on the front chest, and the exit wound is at the back. Now, the witness says, The deceased was in a tussle with a person, this is just a repetition, was in a, was in a tussle with a person who did not have the firearm, but the person who had a firearm was at the back of the deceased. Now your findings are saying the entry wound was in the front, the exit wound was in the back, and more so from your analysis of the wound is that the bullet could have been fired from an angle of depression just your opinion. Does that accord with your findings? No, it does not, my man. No, go 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 tige umu fige wa yelu sana no muntu ge owa yenga pete spam. Bese go go tige owa yenga pete spam. Wa yenga se mufa kwa kege umu fi. Kwa se logo ge agusanga nige na logo minage. Engi tolile uma ngaba se nisola ge npega wanage umzimba wako mufi. Agusanga nige go tige owa yenga pete spam. Wa yenga se mufa kwa ke. Thank you, Doug. I had so many questions, but I realized that uh, most of them relate to ballistic expertise and your pathologists. You dissect bodies when they come there to identify the causes of death, not so. Thank you, Doug. I don't think I've got any further questions to you. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, I do have questions, my lord. Thank yes, you. yes, go yes. ahead. Thank you. Doctor, 
Well, thank you, Doctor. Amongst the police officers, Doctor, that attended the autopsy was um, Warrant Officer Mtlatlo and um, Captain Mangana. Do you confirm that? Yes. Yes. <coughs> I Doctor, there is evidence by one of these uh, witnesses or police officials that the, the bullet projectile that was found at the crime scene was not measured. Against that background, at the to autopsy, Doctor, were there any measurements that were taken by the police officers of the exit and entrance wounds? No, the, the usual practice is that the doctor who is performing the autopsy will take the measurements of the wounds. Well, According to the, the evidence, Doctor, that has been tendered in this court, the incident occurred at that photo in the kitchen at photo 15 of Exhibit D. There is evidence, uh, Doctor, that the deceased, after he had been shot, he, he moved from that kitchen and he fell on the sitting room. Maybe the sketch plan is going to assist us. Can, can we be assisted with the beaming of the sketch plan? There's a photo that uh, I've just um, Highlighted to you, Doctor, photo 15 of Exhibit D. After, after the, the disease had been shot, Doctor, in the chest, standing up straight, what would be his uh, 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 position after the gunshot? Would he be <coughs> still be remaining up straight or, or he will fall down? It is certainly, well, you would expect a person to fall down. That's the classic thing. But depending on how strong you are, it's possible that this person could have moved around. Are you able to tell this court, Doctor, for how long would he be in a position to move uh, from, from that point that is at the door? <coughs> how long in time? Would he be in a position to move from the door? I don't know how long it in will distance. take you. No, I don't know. Can I just say, my oh Lord, I'm mean, we're talking about seconds to a few minutes here. There is also evidence, Doctor, that if you look at uh, the discuss plan, it was shot at the door. The door will be the, the part, the below part of, of uh, just look at the uh, discuss plan. The door will be the, the lower part of the discuss plan, will be at the lower part of the discuss plan. Yes. yes. And then there is also evidence that he was able to move from that point and he fell on the sitting room. There the, the, the are couches there. The, the, the red. Uh, yes, th those are two couches uh, opposite each other. And he fell in between the couch, the couch on the, on the right, and the TV stand. Will that be possible? Yes. Uguti ke wasuka kona la pe ana ke ekishin wayo wagule la na makauchi kona yebo kungenze galoko. You also testified, Doctor, that he the deceased bled heavily internal. He bled internal. 
internally. Yes, that's yes. correct. Or they also played external, that is from the exit wound. They would have been dribbling of wounds. I mean, this is an open wound, like a normal uh, skin wound. So they would be dribbling of, dribbling of blood, certainly. It could be, it could be there. Will also be correct, Doctor, that this dripping of blood will be from the kitchen, that is the point at the door to the sitting room in between the couch and the TV stand. The dripping will be found from the kitchen, that is the movement from where he was to the sitting room. Yes, if you found him, then you can assume that was the movement after he was shot. Okay. Doctor, when you look at uh, the photo album, Exhibit D, starting from photo 12, 15. <laughs> 26. You will confirm, Doctor, that there, there, there is no tripling of blood. Amongst the few photos that I've highlighted to you. 15. 12, 15, 12, 15, 26, 26. Yeah, I don't see any blood there. Doctor, there's been this theory by, by the defense that the, the scene was contaminated, cleaned, before the arrival of the police. Will that suggest that theory if you don't see the tripling of blood? If he was walking and if he was dripping blood, then surely, yeah. Okay. I mean, Doctor, there's been this theory by the defense that the scene was contaminated, you know, interfered with before the arrival of the police. So the absence of blood will mean or support that theory that there has been some contamination by some people before the police arrived. That's it. You mean blood? Yes, blood spot. Because contamination is ambiguous. The and as I understand the doctor, he says if he was dripping blood, the deceased, just listen to me, doc, the deceased had a, a T-shirt on. And if you look at the photos, when he was brought to the hospital, as you as your observation, his T-shirt was bloodied backwards and forwards. And according to your analysis, blood also percolated towards his trousers. That's correct. Right, that's yes. the background. This yeah. gentleman was not naked. Yes. That's it. Can you exclude the possibility of the blood percolating from the wound? You actually testified that there was no squirting or sprouting yes. of the blood. Yes. It was not like squirting tele out. Yes, mm. telescoped. It was it, most of the blood was contained within the chest cavity. Is that yes, so? That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's the background I understand. Yeah. Yes. Maybe, Doctor, if I can make a U turn and, make, uh, and ask the following question in a different way. There's a witness here by Ulelani uh, Naja. He says when he arrived at the scene, he found the disease at the passage. The passage will be Sorry, Kayang Naja, sorry, it's Kayang Naja, not Bulelan. Sorry, Tot, I'm just looking for this photo so that I can take you straight away to the photo. I'm sorry, Doctor, it's a pity that the, the, that passage is not clearly depicted. Maybe if we can use the sketch plan, the, 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 the sketch plan that you have just used. Thank you. 
Yes, he found him lying at that point, facing upward. With the exit wound, is it also possible to find blood, to, to, to find blood there at that spot? If the deceased was lying upward, facing upward, and there is an exit wound at, at his back. This is possible. <laughs> Doctor, would that be dropped of blood or it will be a pool of blood where it would be lying? It depends. Facing upwards. It would be like a smudge area that he would be lying in your as if your clothes are wet and you lie on something. I also heard you, doctor, saying that if the disease was against the door, the kitchen door, the, the, the bullets would have gone through, exited, and went through the door. What did you mean by that? He never said that. Did you say that, Doc? That the bullet went through the door? I can see if, your surprise. If the bullet was through him and yeah. it went out of him, yes. it could have gone through the door. Yeah, it could have. Yeah. Not it went through the door. Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, why not? It could have. Uh, it could have. It could have. Thank my daughter, I have no questions. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Thank you, my lord. <coughs> Doctor, Doctor Stienkamp, you testified about the wound track. <clears throat> can you hear me? Yes, I can hear. Okay. You testified about the wound track, that it was from the front to the back, but towards lower side, towards the back. Am I correct? Did I understand you correct? Yes. From okay. front to back, <clears throat> front to back, and downwards and away from the midline. Okay. Could that have been caused by the fact that the shooter was taller than the deceased? It's possible, yes. Yeah. Okay. If in the last term, doctor, if I understand the the gunshot wound that you examined, was it a fatal wound or what? I beg your pardon. The gunshot wound <coughs> was it a fatal wound or what? Yes, yes it was a fatal wound. Okay. Yes, I do understand that, but just uh, clarify this for me. Would it have made a difference had the deceased been transported in a stretcher? Then being transported in a private car to the hospital. It was a fatal wound, and he would have survived a few seconds to minutes. I don't think so. I think if you are in a situation where you have a critical ill patient, you should try and get him to the hospital. But that's my opinion. I'm not a clinician. I'm a <laughs> 
Noma ke wa hanji swa nge stresha ke anga hanji swa anga hanji swa nge moto e private ukuti kwa ngege kwenze umesugo loko ke goba uma uku kwisimu la umu lukonage e tolu kulimala uku kanje nage ufanele ukuti umtole espelja noma umfigi espelja. From the qualifications that you have testified about in this court that you obtained in 1976, does it include the ballistic evidence? I've never done ballistics, no. It's not included in this degree? I never did a course in ballistics. Okay. You further testified about the blackening on the wound track. You remember that, Doc? That's correct. And she looked at the monk father's leg and Allah, which he got corner, go be mia mag, go nag, in my banamukli mala lock. Did you take any samples along the blackening? Did you take any samples to the laboratory in order to determine whether what type of the blackening you saw? whether it was because of the powder or it was because of the cloth or any other thing? No, I did not. Anzangan tate luto ge uguti ge itunyelwege ele ba pege uguti yini ge ea bangela ge uguti guze kushinje ge ubala ube mnyama lap. If that test was not done, how do we know what type of the blackening was there on the gunshot wound if it was not taken for examination? Well, that's the usual that we do. We don't do much others. We usually don't send those blood-stained suit and debris for examination, unless we want to do, we're not sure that it is, for instance, the stippling, for instance, then we take histology. But I've never heard people taking from a wound the blackening. <laughs> But to confirm, to confirm your observation, that should have assisted to confirm what you observed on the wound. Not really, unless I was doubtful as to what else it could be, and I don't know much what else, what much else it can be. But just one last question, Doctor. I know we have we have answered this question, but I also want to get it from you. That you said at the time when the deceased was shot, from your observations, it means that he would have been facing inside the house. I'm not sure whether you still remember that picture where the door was shown. Yeah. Number 15, yeah. <clears throat> From your observation, then it, it would mean that the deceased was shot when he was facing inside the house. Not from my observations. No, no if, I mean from... If I consider the fact that there's a that that might be a bullet wood, a bullet in the door or something, then that would make sense. Oh my God, if, sorry, sorry, if you can finish. But if he was shot from the other side, then there must have been a bullet towards the house. Okay. And it, that is from your observation that the exit wound was in front. No. So that the entrance wound was in front. That's correct, yes. That's correct. Okay. Thank you, my lord. I've got no further questions. Thank you. Any re exam? Mr. Maybe just one aspect. Doctor, you were asked by Council for Accusation number four about the possibility of blood dripping from the kitchen into the sitting room. You, you testify that. The, your findings was that the that blood would be squirting from the from the wound. Now the question is, after how long? Which? Yeah, no. Uh, the doctor never said that. Yes. 
Uh, yes, let, let me just rephrase, yes. After how long would the blood start sweating from the wound? The blood only, this, the blood only squirts if there's an artery involved. Yes. So if you cut your artery, like your wrist artery, and the blood squirts out, yes. and you'd see this, the, the, the blood people or the ballistic people can probably tell you better about the squirt. That yes. kind of thing. But there was no artery involved here. Yeah? There was a, not externally. Yes. All this was internally. So blood was squirting, but internally. Not external. Any other thing you want to add, Doctor? No, thank you, my lord. Are you not master? Stand come. I am supposed to be. Like I know. The surgeons are very particular. About I know. That. They want to be called Mister. Yes. Mister. I'm actually a Mister. <laughs> That's correct, yes. We keep saying Doctor, Doctor, Doctor. When I was listening to your curriculum, I realized that we have a Master in front of it. Well, having said that, I don't know how you would have felt when you were still alive in the year 15 of July. Is it March? When Julius Caesar was uh, assassinated? It was March, 15th yeah, of 15th March. Yeah, 15th of March, 44 before Christ, when the first post-mortem was conducted. Yes. And the cause of death, despite the fact that he was stabbed 32 times or 25 times, only one stab wound. Yeah was responsible for the death. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Can I be excused? Yeah, you're excused now. Yes, say. As a court, please, my lord, um, we've agreed with my colleagues that in light of the fact that there's an impart important aspects of the case that we perhaps lead one witness per day, mm. who then request that we stand down until tomorrow, we'll be calling the ballistic expert tomorrow, my lord. How many ballistic experts are you going to call? Uh, so far, only one, my lord. Yeah, it will give me time to read. Read on the subject. This judge, I don't go to court with a, a blank head. I prepare for the evidence which is supposed to be led. Yes. So I appreciate you borrowing me these uh, these books. Okay. As a court please. Okay.